my, what do we have here? Huh, let me see. Oh, oh, it's Friday. It is Friday, September 4th, 2020. I am your host, Marco Alvarado, and welcome to Closing Out the Week with the Closers Podcast. Welcome. How was your week? Was it, uh, was it nice? I mean, if you're in California, we have experienced better air quality, so... In that respect, it was nice. A little bit nicer than previous weeks. Are you liking this type of heat? It's not as hot as previous weeks, too. It was very nice this week. Um, One day out of the week, I believe it topped out at 86, which I'll take it. I'll take that any week, any day. 86 is, like, perfect. I prefer weather that's, like, 70... Tops out at, like, 78. But... I'm so used to weather that gets into the 86, 90s, and even 100s that, you know, 86 is nice to me. But um, I hope your week has been well, has, has gone good so far. Uh, you have another day, your last day of the week, Friday, today, to make the week, to own the week, if you haven't already. Um, for me personally, this week has been interesting. Um. There's been some really high points and some low points. Uh, So I I guess, you know, I've just been living life. But uh, I'm referring to a specific story that's been in the local news in Sacramento um, that actually hits very close to home for me. Now, who I'm going to be talking about, I don't know very well. I'll admit that. But I feel like I need to talk about this person and the situation surrounding this person. Um, because it, it connects to a lot of different things that we're going to be talking about today um, in a very removed way, but it still connects. And what I'm talking about is um, the shooting of Jeremy Southern. Uh, he was shot by police back in July. And I had not known about this situation until maybe two, two days ago. I, my mom had the news on. And I was just walking by the TV and I saw, I heard the name and my eyes just got super wide and I just turned around and I gasped because I knew who it was. Uh, Jeremy Southern uh, was a, was a, was a kid who I TA'd for. Um, I was the TA for his class, I should say my senior year and his sophomore year, um, Ryan Salinas, who's been on the show before, him and I both were co-TAs for his class that he was in in high school. And uh, I got to know Jeremy over the course of that year. Uh, He did switch out of that class, I believe, after a certain point. And um, I didn't see much of him after that. But I know that he had a lot of uh, things going on behind the scenes at home that made it hard for him to concentrate. But he was one of those one of those people that um, even even when he was going through a rough time, uh, I don't know. He 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 was always smiling, and he was always you know trying to make light of uh, any situation that he could, and try to bring joy to any situation that he was in. Um, the situation surrounding Jeremy now. Uh, you know, is totally devoid of any sort of happiness, which is very, very tragic. And I feel for his family and my thoughts are with his family um, who are filing a civil suit against the police, um, a civil rights lawsuit, lawsuit, I should say, against the Sacramento Police Department because uh, of of their conduct in this situation. So basically what happened is uh, the the police was, uh, the police were were out searching for someone who was, uh, involved in a shooting at some apartment complex the week prior. And they believed that Jeremy, uh, was involved in that shooting. So when they confronted him, Jeremy, uh, pulled out a a weapon, a gun, and there was a standoff between him and the police. Uh, the police fired to disarm him. They disarmed him and he was on the ground. And he wasn't dead. Um, he was still living, but the, the gun was away from him. It was about 10 feet away. And instead of 
arresting Jeremy and taking him to the hospital, they shot him again and killed him. So I hope that the family gets the peace that they need in this very tragic situation. And you can watch the video for yourself. There is live body cam footage of the incident that you can watch online. And it, I think it paints the picture very clearly that uh, the police had everything under control after Jeremy was disarmed. There wasn't a need for that second shot that ultimately killed Jeremy. So uh, rest in peace and power. And once again, my thoughts are with uh, his family at this time. Uh, speaking of somebody else who passed away, literally the day after, yeah, last Friday, day after I recorded the episode last week, actor Chadwick Boseman passed away. Uh, this has been in the news this entire past week. It's been pretty hard for some people. It was tough for me that night when I found out. It was very sad. Um, he was one of the greatest young actors we had in cinema. And uh, it, to lose a star that bright, it's, you know, it's hard to replace that, that, uh, that, that warmth that a, that type of star brings. And um, I didn't know this part of this story, but apparently Marvel and D Disney had no idea about his condition. Um, Quinn and I were talking last week and we were like, oh, okay, they must have, they had to have known, right? So like, they had to have already had plans to kind of pivot Black Panther in a different direction. Uh, but no, apparently not. He kept it super close to his chest. Uh, and him and his family did, which I totally respect. And, you know, there wasn't a reason. Uh, there's no reason for Chadwick to have, you know, made it public if he didn't want to or even to Marvel. Because up until apparently a week ago or two weeks ago, uh, Chadwick Boseman believed that he was going to beat cancer and he'd be fine uh, when the time came uh, to film Black Panther in March, which is when they were going to start filming Black Panther 2. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Things turned for the worse. And here we are. So it just adds another layer of tragedy to this already really, really, really dark situation. But uh, Marvel is making a point to honor Chadwick Boseman's memory and his career. And they're not focusing on the future of Black Panther or, you know, how they're going to go forward with that character. They're not really thinking about that at the moment, which I think is the best move. It's not time with the pandemic and everything. We have time. You guys, as Disney, have time to figure things out. Um, but right now, the moment is for Chadwick in honoring his uh, legacy. And uh, man, this year just gets rougher and rougher, doesn't it? <laughs> it's tough. But yeah, I know he was one of my favorite young actors, too. I, I really enjoyed his portrayal of T'Challa. Even though Black Panther wasn't necessarily like one of my favorite Marvel movies, I still enjoyed it, and I and I enjoyed his portrayal of the character. I'm gonna miss him a lot. So rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. And now that we got that kind of somber talk out of the way, let's let's talk about something that's uh, not really somber, but kind of just as gloomy. Um, and and honestly, just it's kind of it's kind of funny um, in a, in a in a dark way, just because Trump. Today, actually, um, suggested that people in the state of North Carolina should vote twice in November. He said, uh, and I quote, let them send it in and let them go vote, he said in an interview, interview with uh, WECT TV in Wilmington, North Carolina on Wednesday. OK, so it was Wednesday when asked about the security of mail in votes and then quote again. And if the system is as good as they say it is, then obviously they won't be able to vote. So basically, yeah, he's encouraging North Carolinians to commit a crime. You cannot vote twice. <laughs> if you vote twice, you are committing fraud, which is the very thing that he doesn't want. That's why he wants to defund the mail to stop voter fraud, right? But then he goes on the campaign trail and says, Vote twice, 
Maybe, maybe it'll work out. Maybe we'll win that way. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know what voting fraud even is. All he knows is how to get his fan base riled up. And he knows if he says that the Democrats are causing fraud, they're the ones that are frauding, uh, doing, doing fraud, committing voting fraud. That's going to get his base all hyped up. But his base doesn't even know the difference that when he calls for fraud, they're not like, hold up. Didn't you, aren't you the one who wanted to not have fraud done in this election? You're the one that's championing, championing that, right? They can't even see that. Obviously, there's been, obviously, there's been pushback uh, from the media and from other politicians, such as uh, the state attorney general, <laughs> Josh Stein, who said President Trump outrageously encouraged North Carolinians to break the law in order to help him sow chaos in our election. Make sure you vote, but do not vote twice. I will do everything in my power to make sure the will of the people is upheld in November. So even people who represent the state of North Carolina were like, please don't listen to this guy. Um, it's just, I, mean, I don't know. Every week we get a new story that kind of perfectly illustrates uh, how things have gone during the, prom- the <laughs> during the Trump presidency. And this is just another one to add to the, add to the list. Uh, you already know that there's going to be a book made um, full of just these, these type of events, these types of situations that Trump like sparks. Someone's going to make a book about that. Just compiling everything from, from the very first second he became president to like the very end, whenever that is, hopefully it's a couple months away. But um, I mean, just looking back when he first became president, how he, banned people coming from the Middle East and like all these situations that have transpired over the past almost four years. And it's crazy to say it's been four years because it doesn't feel like it at all. But at the same time, it feels like it's been 12. So I bet a lot of people feel the same way. Um, But to kind of uh, put a little bit of a positive spin on everything in terms of the election and politics, if you are somebody who is uh, sane and wants Biden to win. Um, he leads Trump in key uh, three key swing states, according to a Fox News poll. Okay, so this is Fox News. They have every incentive to you know fluff the numbers, and they're not. Even if they are, uh, the numbers still show Biden is leading in three key swing states, which are Arizona, where he leads by nine percentage points. Uh, Wisconsin, where he leads by eight percentage points, and North Car- North Carolina, <laughs> who we just talked about, where Biden leads by four percentage points. Um, Biden's advantage comes from strong support among women and suburban voters, Fox News said. Moreover, suburban women in all three states trust Biden over Trump to handle cor- the coronavirus and policing slash criminal justice. The poll conducted by phone on August 29th to September 1st has a margin of error of uh, 3.5 points. Um, other polls released Wednesday show Biden with a national lead of between 7 to 10 points. Nearly 100 Republican lawmakers, including former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, endorsed Biden on Thursday. And that's very interesting. Um, I've talked about this in the past, but there are three segments of the popular. It's three segments politically uh, that are that are kind of jockeying for position in this country and it's 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 clear that corporate republicans are endorsing biden because of the corporate stance um money in corporations reign over anything else over ideology or anything in this country um, and especially when you talk about the establishment of the Republicans and the establishment of the Democrats. And that's what it's showing here. More Republicans are endorsing Biden uh, constantly. And all that shows is that a lot of Republicans are jumping ship. Now, now the Republicans in name for now, for now. But it really seems like the corporatists are jumping to the Democratic Party. And... The Republicans, the Republican Party is turning into the Trump Party. So 
where does that leave the left? I don't know. I don't I don't really know. And like I've said before, the, the best scenario is for the left to finally get a foothold in the Democratic Party, you know, via AOC, Ilhan Omar, um, even, you know, Tulsi Gabbard and uh, the other progressive uh, candidates that have actually won across this country in recent elections to compete in November. Uh, a lot of them have won to 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 for, uh, to jockey for um, Senate spots and House spots come November. So that's that's very interesting. But if progressives can successfully take over the Democratic Party at that point, the corporatists have nowhere to go and they have the capital to create a third party. That's really the only hope. If they take over the Democratic Party, we basically have a fascist party on the right, which is the Trump party, um, you know, that, that new Republican party that is forming. And then we have the Democrats who are just corporate stooges. So it's very imperative that we keep voting progressive because the corporate, if you're a corporate lover, the corporations will always be there. They have the power to create something new from the ground up. The left doesn't. If you want representation, fair representation, you even if you're just a constitutionalist and you and you just want balance you should hope that the progressives can take over the democratic party because the corporations will be able to they'll be fine they'll live trust me they're cockroaches you can never get rid of fucking corporations but with that it is time for the theme of the week hooray everybody hooray theme of the week and what is it well, I'll tell you, it is a fresh start. For many of us, we started school this week. If you go to Sac State like I do, we started this week. You might have already been in school. Some of you listening might be in high school or elementary school. So in that case, you guys started like a month ago, and I feel bad for you guys. But nonetheless, a lot of us are, are entering um, this new phase in our year. Something that we can use as a catalyst to transition us from this COVID sad summer to something having with having a, something with a routine, something that we can look forward to, even if it's a damn essay, something. And there's no better time, like in situations where you're forced to form a routine. To change other parts of your life as well. And it is very, you know, minuscule what you can do. But all those little changes that you do and you make during this fresh start phase of your year will add up. And you will look back in a couple months and be like, I'm so glad I made efforts to adopt some new things. Whether that be changing up your morning routine getting up earlier, going to sleep earlier, you know, reading more, uh, trying to get your schoolwork done on, you know, all on Tuesdays and Thursdays so you can have Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays to work and go to class virtually, and then you have your weekends off, discipline, whatever it is, it's a new, it's a new start, it's a fresh start for some people, so take advantage of it, try to change your attitude, try to look at things a little bit differently, let the bullets bounce off you when things get tough. You know, don't internalize things. Don't, you know, as, as someone used to say that, you know, was, was I used to see a lot uh, at work. Don't personalize things. You know, just try to make steps. Take steps to just make this year, end this year on the right note. And it starts right now. So, so it's a fresh start. Okay. It's September. We're in the home stretch of this year. Even if you're not in school, we only got like four months left of this year. Let's 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 not wait till January to start, you know, to make that new start. Let's let's do it now. We we can. So that's that's the theme of this week. And without any further ado, I'll bid you an adieu. Please follow us at the Closers Podcast on Instagram, at Closers Podcast on Facebook, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are the Closers Podcast. Please share these episodes with your favorite people because we can build a community of nothing but just people, like people's favorite people. 
And wouldn't that be awesome? You know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, on Monday, Quinn will hit you with Hang 10. And then on Wednesday, we finally have Gabriella back on to talk about Nixium. Uh, and uh, if you haven't already, check out those two other episodes that we did on Colts, Jonestown, and Waco. And uh, yeah, your week is now closed. Congratulations and you're welcome. I will talk to you on Wednesday when we talk about Nixium. Have a great weekend.